So we're going to talk about what is kombucha, the benefits of kombucha, and then finally how to make it. What all's in it? So we got tea, water, sugar, and a SCOBY. So a SCOBY is a symbiotic colony of yeast and bacteria. And I'll pass one around here. You can feel it. We might need some uh, paper towels or something. You, you, can, you can pick it up. You can play with it. Where, where? Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to reuse it. So so I use just the plain black tea. I like I like the flavor yeah. of plain black tea. But I'll go into some of the other teas you can use. So a, a, a cool fact: no no scoby or mother has ever been made in a laboratory. So they they've tried to take all the different strains of bacteria and yeast and put it together, and they've never never had a mother form. So. All, all of these actually came from one ancient mother. So I would have preferred to have an electron microscope in here, and we could have looked at our kombucha and seen all these bacteria and stuff swimming around, but I didn't get my hands on one. So I gave you the guys the next best thing. So we got pictures of some of the strains of bacteria and yeast that are in there. Okay, You can see the ones in the top left there are called acetobacter bacteria, and they're the ones responsible for converting the alcohol during the fermentation into acetic acid. So I'm sorry, some of you guys probably wish I would leave that out. They're in there regardless. So the pediococcus, they produce some lactic acid, some, some good amino acids for our bodies. And then you got these ones down here, the yeast, uh, the, the ones that look like marshmallows. You got the yeast that look like Rice Krispies. And then you got the lactobacillus that look like uh, cheese puffs there. So next time you need a snack, you can just get a <laughs> glass of kombucha, and it's all in there. What are some of the things you get when you drink kombucha? So gluconic acid, it's a a pretty strong antiviral. Um, there have also been some studies with it to help break up gallstones. Hyaluronic acid. It's a component of connective tissue, so things like ligaments and tendons and things like that. It helps build them up. Chondroitin sulfate is a building block of cartilage. Um, mucoitin, salaric sol acid, is a com component of the stomach lining. So you're getting a, a wide diversity of you know, building blocks in kombucha. You're getting all your B vitamins. If any of you buy a bottle, you might notice, notice some cloudiness on the bottom. So that's, that's some of the yeast accumulating at the bottom. If you want to mix those up, that's where you get a lot of the B vitamins so we in kombucha. Have, well, I you can just kind of mix it up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah if, it, if it gets too bubbly, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you got eucinic acid, also an antiviral. Uh, acetic acid, that's what kind of gives it the, uh, that vinegary flavor, right? And, you know, a whole, whole bunch of healthy, healthy ingredients in there. So you, you might have heard before that you want to eat an alkaline diet, right? So isn't vinegar slightly acidic? Yeah? Is that, is that confusing to anyone? Okay, so, so it, is, it is a little bit confusing. So whenever we're determining things that are acidic or basic, for our diet, we're actually looking at what's called the ashes or what's left over after our body kind of breaks it up and uses it. So things like vinegar are actually very basic for your body in cleansing. Things like, uh, like, like uh, citrus or like lemon juice, citric acid, <coughs> it's acidic. But as your body breaks it down and incorporates it, it's very basic in cleansing. What does kombucha taste like? You know, it can, it can have a all assorted flavors depending on you know the temperature that you let it ferment at, you know the type of tea you use, how long you let it go. So just got, give you guys a little background on, you know where where did kombucha come from? What's what's the history? So it started in ancient China back in about 200 BC, and then it kind of it kind of spread around locally from there until a doctor Kombu started using it to treat his patients. And he had such great success, you know, word kind of spread around. And the emperor in Japan was actually having really bad digestive problems. So they sent for Dr. Kombu, and he went out and treated the emperor. And he had such great success, they actually named the tea after Dr. Kombu. So that's how it got its name, kombucha. So from there, kombucha spread via the Silk Road. It went to India and Russia and Europe. It became very popular, even in Europe until about <coughs> World War II. 
where the wartime rationing of tea and sugar, you know, most people couldn't afford it. So it was just mainly the upper class that continued brewing kombucha. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits here. So if we were to break down the word probiotic, it means in favor of, pro. Biotic means life. It's fascinating how some people came up with these words, in favor of life. Such a great word. 